speaking of asserts, uh, exceptions are called errors. Why is it called errors? Uh, so we, I mean, we we use the same. We're the same as Python, mm-hmm. right? But um, we implement in a very different way, right? And so if you look at um, other languages, like we'll pick on C plus plus, our favorite, right? C plus plus has a thing called zero cost exception handling. Okay, so, and this is, in my opinion, something to learn lessons from. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice polite way okay. of saying it. And yeah. so. Um, and so zero cost exception handling, the way it works is that it's called zero cost because if you don't throw an exception, there's supposed to be no overhead for the non-error code. Mm-hmm. And so it takes the error path out of the uh, the common path. Um, it does this by making throwing an error extremely expensive. And so if you actually throw an error with a C++ compiler using exceptions, it has to go look up in tables on the side and do all this stuff. And so throwing an error could be like 10,000 times more expensive than returning from a function, right? Um, also, it's called zero cost exceptions, but it's not zero cost by any stretch of the imagination because it massively bloats out your code, your binary. It also adds a whole bunch of different paths because of destructors and other things like that that exist in C++. And it reduces the number of optimizations. It has like all these effects. And so this thing that was called zero cost exceptions, it really ain't. <laughs> okay. Now, if you fast forward to, to newer languages, and um, and this includes Swift and Rust and Go and, and now Mojo, um, uh, well, and Python's a little bit different because it's interpreted. And so like, it's got a little bit of a different thing going on. But if you look at it, if you look at compiled languages, um, many newer languages say, okay, well, let's not do that zero cost exception handling thing. Let's actually treat an throwing an error the same as returning a variant, returning mm-hmm. either the normal result or an error. Mm-hmm. Now, programmers generally don't want to deal with all the typing machinery and like pushing around a variant. And so you use all the syntax that Python gives us, for example, try and catch, and it, you know, functions that raise and things like this. You can put a raises decorator on your functions, stuff like this, and uh, if you want to control that. And then um, the language can provide syntax for it, but under the hood, the way the computer executes it, throwing an error is basically as fast as returning something. Oh, interesting. So it's exactly the same way Dave, yeah. from a compiler perspective. And so this is actually, I mean, it's, it's a fairly nerdy thing, right? Which is why I love it. Um, but the uh, this has a huge impact on the way you design your APIs, right? So in C++, huge communities turn off exceptions mm-hmm. because the cost is just so high, right? And so the zero cost cost is so high, right? And so that means you can't actually use exceptions in many libraries, right? Interesting. And yeah. even for the people that do use it, well, okay, how and when do you want to pay the cost? If I try to open a file, should I throw an error? Well, what if I'm probing around looking for something, right? And I'm looking it up in many different paths. Well, if it's really slow to do that, maybe I'll add another function that doesn't throw an error, returns an error code instead. Mm-hmm. And now I have two different versions of the same thing. And so it causes you to fork your APIs. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, one of the things I learned from Apple and that I still love is the art of API design is actually really profound. I think this is something that Python's also done a pretty good job at in terms of building out this large scale package ecosystem. It's about having standards and things like this. And so, you know, we wouldn't want to enter a mode where, um, you know, there's this theoretical feature that exists in language, but people don't use it in practice. Now, I'll also say one of the other really cool things about this implementation approach is that it can run on GPUs and it can run on accelerators and things like this. And that standard zero cost exception thing would never work on an accelerator. And so this is also part of how Mojo can scale all the way down to like little embedded systems and to running on GPUs and things like that. Can you actually say about the, maybe, uh, is there some high level way to describe the challenge of exceptions and how they work in code during compilation? So it's just this idea of percolating up a thing, an error. Yeah. Yeah. So the way the way to think about it is um, think about a function that doesn't return anything, just mm-hmm. as a simple case, right? And so you have function one calls function two, calls function three, calls function four. Along that call stack, there are try blocks. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if you have function one calls function two, function two has a try block, and then within it, it calls function three, mm-hmm. right? Well, if, what happens if function three throws? Mm-hmm. Well, actually, start simpler. What happens if it returns? 
well, if it returns, it's supposed to go back out and continue executing and then fall off the bottom of the try block and keep going and all's good. If the function throws, you're supposed to exit the current function and then get into the accept clause, mm-hmm. right? And then do whatever code's there and then keep falling on and going on. And so the way that a, a compiler like Mojo works is that the call to that function, which happens in the accept block, calls the function, and then instead of returning nothing, it actually returns you know, an, a variant between nothing and an error. And so if you return normally, you fall off the bottom or do a return, you return nothing. And if you throw, throw an error, you return the variant that is, I'm an error, right? So when you get to the call, you say, okay, cool, I called a function. Hey, I know locally I'm in a try block, right? And so I, I call the function and then I check to see what it returns. Aha, if it's that error thing, jump to the accept block. And that's all done for you uh, behind the scenes. Exactly. And so the compiler does all this for you. And I mean, one of the things, if you dig into how this stuff works in Python, it gets a little bit more complicated because you have finally blocks, which now need you need to go into, do some stuff, and then those can also throw and return. Wait, what? Nested? Yeah, uh, and like the stuff matters for compatibility. Um, like there's, really? There's, you can nest them? There's with clauses, and so with clauses are kind of like finally blocks with some special stuff going on, and so there's nesting in general, nesting of anything, nesting of functions, should be yeah. illegal. Well, <laughs> it just feels like it adds a level of complexity. I, I, Lex, I'm merely an implementer, and so this is again <laughs> one, 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 right. one of the, one of the one of the trade offs you get when you decide to build a superset is you get to implement yeah, a yeah. full fidelity implementation of the thing that you decided is good, and so. Yeah, I mean, we can we can complain about the reality of the world and shake our fist, but it always feels like you shouldn't be allowed to do that, like to declare functions inside functions, inside functions. Oh, wait, wait, wait! What, what happened to Lex, the the Lisp guy? No, I understand that, but Lisp is what I used to do in college. <laughs> so now you've grown up. <laughs> You know, we've all done things in college we're not proud of. No, no, I, I <laughs> wait love, a second. I love, wait I a love second. Lisp. I love Lisp. Okay, well, yeah, I was going to say, you, you're afraid of me irritating the whole <laughs> yeah, internet? Yeah, like... no, no, I love Lisp. It's, it's, uh, it, worked, it, it worked as a joke in my head. And yeah, yeah. Out, so, right? so, okay. so, so nested functions are, joking aside, actually really great in, yeah. for certain things, right? And so these are also called closures. Closures are pretty cool, and you can pass callbacks. There's a lot of good patterns, and so 